Lao Tzu once said the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. My first step is flying 7,000 miles from Los Angeles to the Philippines. Welcome to Monday Love. To go inside a culture with a deep love for basketball, a love of biblical proportions. Americans introduced the game through the YMCA in the Philippine Islands in 1898, just seven years after it was invented. But nobody, not even Dr. James Naismith, could have predicted what basketball would mean to this country and a young man named Simon Enciso. This is Passport Pros with Kevin Cuenca. Welcome to Ninoy Aquino Airport in Manila, the Philippines. It's time for an adventure. Gonna meet up with a young man named Simon Enciso, who I first met when I was covering his basketball games back in 2009 at Terra Nova High School up in the Bay Area of California. After that, he stayed around the Bay to play college ball and then got drafted into the PBA, the Philippines Basketball Association. Basically, it's like the NBA of the Philippines. But what's that like? What are the games like? The practices, the atmosphere around all that? And then the people, the food, the culture. These are all the questions that we're going to be answering during this trip. Should be a lot of fun. You guys get to come along for the ride. Let's get to it. I don't know what artist this is, but they were slapping it at this car show my first night in Manila. I asked for some Mac Dre or E40 and all I got was Ns, ns, ns. It'd been about seven years since I saw Simon, so we had a lot of catching up to do. I knew he played two years of Juco ball at Skyline College and another two at Notre Dame de Namur, both a little bit south of San Francisco. I'd seen videos of him on YouTube working out with one of the most innovative basketball trainers in the world. Devin Williams from In The Lab's 10,000 Hours series. But how do you end up playing pro ball in the Philippines? Our first car ride together in Manila would answer that. I'm working basketball tournaments and, and basketball camps during the week and weekends to save up for this ticket and I already bought it so I just put it in front of like, yo mom, I'm leaving. She was like, what? What are you talking about? It's like, this is what I want to do. I want to go out there and play basketball. I actually moved out here blind by myself, didn't know anybody. I had one uncle that lived up the street from me that I haven't seen since I was like age nine. So I moved out here blind with no agent, not knowing what, what was the next step. An assistant coach of the Alaska Aces, say so he's from San Francisco, he went to Sonoma State, and he played out here in the PBA, and now he coaches. But you know, he actually was helping me out with getting my paperwork done, so after I got my paperwork done, I could finally try out for teams. So he would tell me, hey, yo, do you have a tryout today over here? They have tryouts here. Sometimes it was tryouts the same day, so there would be a trial in the morning, and then right after that trial, travel across the city to another trial. And I didn't drive, or I didn't know of Uber anywhere, so we would catch taxis, or you know the <laughs> I call it the Bart station because like it's like the Bart from back home, right? Uh, but it was like the little the you know little trains and stuff. How many trials do you think you went through just to earn that that first spot in essentially the D League out here? So out here, man, the biggest thing. If you have somebody that's politically up there, let's say, since you know I knew the assistant coach of Alaska Aces, if he would say, hey, this is my guy, uh, he's coming out there, can you just give him a look? Then they'll be like, oh, hey, Jeff, uh, his name is Jeff Karyas. He was like, hey, this, uh, this, this coach from Alaska, he's, you know, he wants to take a look at this guy. He might be really good. So that kind of you know, puts you over the top of some of the guys that are trying out. So I went to three tryouts. And the first trial, I was, you know, the anticipation of waiting and, and getting your papers done, you know, and then working out on your own, you know, you're like, once you get in the first trial, you're like, man, I want to kill it. You know, so that's what was, that was my mentality. I was just going out there and I was going to hoop. So that's what I did. And they really liked me. And they were like, hey, we're going to draft you. Uh, don't go to any other trials. We're going to draft you. So I told the guy that's helping me out, he was like, no, nah, go to this trial. You just want to make sure you know you have your name out there. You have to play one year D-League to be eligible for the PBA. 
So after I did that, was the next step to get into the draft of PBA. And then you go through the same thing of tryouts with all the other teams, hoping you get picked. And then you go through the draft, which is was, which was crazy because I've never been through a draft like that. With the number five second round draft pick, Rain or Shine, the last two painters select Simon and Cecil. So after the draft, you you know you take pictures with the team and and do all that, and then you go to dinner with the team, and then the next day you go straight to the practice facility. Like the next day, straight to the practice facility and practice. You get a week uh, before they can offer you something, or they let you go. I'm truly lucky to just be in a deal for one year and then get drafted to the league. Sometimes, you know, it takes a couple years. Being drafted and getting on the team and actually playing well in my first conference was, was truly a blessing to me. First one's here. Top flight security of the world, Craig. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Now that we know how Simon made it into the league, it's time to see the work ethic keeping him in it. The next morning, he's the first player at the gym. Up with the Roosters. It's about 7.30 in the morning and the Manila heat is already kicking in. You can see the sweat there. No AC in this gym, but Simon's not letting that stop him. He's getting some skills work in, and he's gonna get some shots up before the team lifts as a group, and then they've got practice after that. So this is the life of a PBA player. After that, it's time to hit the weights. The Road Warriors lift about three times a week with their strength and conditioning coach George. Simon starts with some TRX work, targeting his abs and chest. Then he works his back and core with some inverted rows on the Smith press, before finishing the workout with elevated sumo deadlifts, targeting his hamstrings and glutes. Meanwhile, former NBA lottery pick Al Thornton Throws around some weight on the bench press. After that, we talk about practice. Overall, there's a laid back nature to the Filipino culture, and it shows as the team warms up for practice. But as soon as it's time to hoop, they bring it, especially Simon. It's always important to get the vets on your side, especially a guy like Asi Taulava, a 16-time PBA All-Star and named one of the 40 best players in the league's history. You know, one thing your coaches love here to, to see here is you come in early and you put in the extra work and be one of the last guys to leave, especially if you're the younger guys. And once you've been around for a few years and you become a veteran, then you can start easing up, taking it easy on your workload, but you still gotta work. You know, it's so competitive now, especially with the younger generation that's coming in. It's getting a lot harder and harder, and I've been around for a while. <laughs> Good job, guys. Good effort. Good effort. Three, one, two, three. And Go over a little bit to your right. That's the kind of Simon and CISO we see every day. Look at that. You see that? Exactly what I'm telling you guys, folks. He needs to stop looking like he wants to go to the beach. Clean cut. Walking around here half naked. He was my roommate, and I'm scared of him. That's how he walks around in the room. <laughs> Is this every day after practice? Yeah, every day, pretty much. 
How much have you learned just in terms of this stuff? Taking care of your body, all the things that you don't really get credit for, but you gotta do, Man, your body's dependent on. A lot, especially from the veterans on the team, like these two right here, and I'll see you then. Uh, I just, I just got over an injury. It was like, it was just bad tendonitis, I guess. And you know, when I'm back home, you don't, you don't take encounter the heat, how much or how long you're in the gym. You know what I mean? So when I'm back home, I'm like, oh, I, I do three, three workouts a day, but they're only like an hour and a half, you know. So when I got here, I thought I could do the same thing. So I used to never stretch. I would just go to the ice bath here and there. Now it's like a daily routine and stretching, icing, rolling out, just, uh, just learning what, well, you know, to eat healthier as well. So just the whole mindset of how I take care of my body has changed since I've been out here. And the food choices are a lot different from the States, so uh, it's a lot harder to uh, eat healthier. Simon's right. This is what you find on the streets of Manila. Boiled or fried peanuts called mani, hard boiled eggs deep fried with orange flour, known as toknening or kwek kwek, and sliced bananas in lumpia wrappers, aka turon. All very tasty, but a lot of grease and fat. Fortunately for Simon, my best friend Pat and me, we're able to get an amazing home cooked meal at Simon's aunt and uncle's house nearby. First, this is the, the famous Jollibee chicken. <laughs> in addition to the chicken, we also had this fish, head still on it, looking dead at us in the eyes as we took apart its body. And my buddy Pat is fresh off a couple tours in Afghanistan, so he was just happy to not see goat meat. Next up, we've got these green Indian mangoes, and then some of the best ice cream I've ever had in my life. And we finished off with some fresh fruit. When Simon was in the PBA's D-League, not yet on a pro team, wasn't making a lot of money, and he needed help. There was literally times where you're like, hey, I can't afford food, I need to come over mm -hmm. yeah. to have dinner <laughs> with you guys. And what yeah. was that situation like for you? Well, Tito Ken and Tito Lisa, man, they, they, always, they always tell me like, you know, don't be shy, just text us, we're only a call away. You know, if you ever need anything, even to this day, if you ever need anything, you know, you could, you're always welcome to come to Green Hills and, mm -hmm. and have dinner with us and the family. So, you know, that was always, that was always there. That wasn't, you know, they always, they offered that from the get. So, you know, <laughs> knowing that, you know, my money wouldn't last for the week and it was okay to call them. And that was just, it just made it even better. Without any spoken words with my sister, it, it's, it's like accepting this responsibility without even saying anything. And I'm so happy that Lisa has been very supportive of that too. Uh, I guess she's, she has, played that role even better than I have, you know? So uh, it's really, uh, uh, we're just happy that we're able to extend and help Simon in the mm -hmm. least possible way. I want him to feel that he's not alone, you mm -hmm. know, that there's someone he can always run to or ask or be with if he needs anything or just, you know, even if he doesn't need anything, he can just stay with us or, you know, just hang out with us and be part of our family. You know, Tito Ken, Tito Lisa, and my mom and dad who've been working, you know, their butts off back home for me to survive out here. Uh, it's true, truly a blessing, man. Like, just to, have support. Ma, say hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Very good. Very good, Glenda. Very good. On, on your old hoop that used to be right here, do you think you could have beat Simon? Simon? With threes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, we shoot a Cribs episode at Simon's apartment. Back home in San Francisco, you know, you could get in a car and drive out and see, you know, you know, different views of the city, you know what I mean? So when I saw this, I was like, yo, I, I like this. That was my biggest thing, like, cause out here, man, it's so different. You know, you're not able to uh, just go and go see some, see a view, you know what I mean? I don't really got a high points like that. The last spot you were in you used to get flooded during yeah. typhoon season and yeah. now you're up basically in a, in a high rise. For my air conditioning, it was a second hand cause I couldn't really afford it. A, like a newer one. So when, when the rain would come, it would flood through the air conditioning out onto the floor. Like 
I remember I was in bed and I had to wake up for practice and I had my socks on and I woke up and I, I got out of bed to go brush my teeth and I stepped and I was like, oh man, it flooded again last night. So my socks were all wet and then I would get some more towels and throw it and just try to soak everything up. A lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions on that hoop. It goes down. Here's the bathroom. It's a way better bathroom than what I had before. I usually switch off with these, so I wear these co these Jordans. It goes with our jerseys. So and then just got some other stuff. Just got the Jordan 11s, 72 tens. Uh, taxis. These are one of my favorites. These are so clean. I I rarely wear them because I <laughs> I don't like to mess them up. But yeah, man, so I'm slowly, you know, this collection will be a lot bigger, but patience, I guess, right? <laughs> then we make our way to the mall across the street where Simon does his recovery routine. He, maybe watch a movie. No, daily life. It's basically like you're back in the States, right? Yeah, pretty much. Especially if you have friends here, then we all just chill, you know, crack jokes. Speaking of jokes. Shit's about to get real awkward. That's what it's like. Simon and I are in the, uh, the cold tub, but it's really like the freezing tub. It's pretty bad, but we're gonna we're gonna dive in right. Now. Oh shit! <laughs> wow! It's nothing. It's nothing. It's really cold. This <laughs> boy Simon's got his arms crossed. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this ritual that you do. You got the hot tub over there, yeah. the cold tub through here. How often do you do this? I try to go every day, but if I can get my ice in after practice, it's great. Usually, I have, I have to go home and can do and handle a couple things. But uh, this is this is very convenient. I mean, it's just across the street from where I live. You have the hot and cold tub, all you need to you know to recover. How many minutes are you in the cold tub? How many minutes are you in the hot tub over there? So usually I'll start in the hot, I'll go five minutes, and then I'll go five minutes cold. And I'll do that for three sets, usually, I'm, and, then I'm, and then I'm usually out. But uh, sometimes if I want to just get it over with, you know, I got something to do, I'll do a quick set where I, I do five minutes over there in the hot, and then I'll go straight 15 and get it done over and get it done. You've had some knee tendonitis issues, mm -hmm. different little knickknacks. How has this ritual helped? you get through that stuff. You know, the hot helps me loosen up my muscles and stuff. And then the cold, it just brings down the inflammation, which is big for tendonitis, because uh, usually, you know, when you have tendonitis, it's just a constant pounding on that tendon and inflammation builds, that's why it hurts. So uh, this, you know, just pre helps prevent it, you know, also with, uh, you know, strengthening around the muscle, around the knee. Can you even try to describe how cold this is? Usually people, you know, get in and they're like, oh, it's so cold, and then they hop back out. But he's, you know, he's actually in here, you know, bearing the pain, so I applaud it. I applaud you, Kevin, you get some points right now. There we go. We just hit five minutes on the timer. Okay, let's get that light. Right. Moroccan scholar Eben Batuta traveled 75,000 miles in the 1300s. He would later say traveling, it leaves you speechless, then turns you into a storyteller. Now I'd heard about kids playing basketball with no shoes, but where? And was it an exaggeration? I took the half hour drive to Intramuros, a historical district in Manila, to find out. And I came across the Barangay 655 basketball court. It left me speechless. It's crazy, man. You know, the love for basketball is crazy out here. They, they'll do anything and everything to, to, you know, make it work out here. Playing barefoot or playing one sandal on one foot or, you know, just, they just make it work, man. And they don't need too much to be happy. And, you know, it's the simple life. And I kind of like that. There's a little side court where some of the younger kids play. Before you make fun of them for missing layups, that ring is really small. The mini ball barely even fits through. And then you have the main court. You know in the States, sometimes you get made fun of for what kind of shoes you're wearing. Here, there's literally one dude with a pair of basketball shoes on. 
Everyone else is either barefoot or playing in sandals. Gives you a whole new appreciation for playing the game we love. There I met a hooper named Jojo Viarena. His peers call him Black Mamba. And he knew all about Simon. As soon as I said Simon and Ciso though, you said kill the crossover. Speed and endurance. Yeah. All around right here. <laughs> <laughs> Problems that I might have, you know, they would kill to be in my position. So, you know, to see that every day and you know, go to practice and back and see all, see all the poverty, you know, really, it motivates me to, you know, keep working hard and, and to stay in my position, you know what I mean? Because, you know, basketball is just for a short period of time in my life and I know at one point it's gonna stop. You know, it, it really motivates me to keep striving to achieving my goals. Simon likes having a fresh cut, so that's what we're doing at Lars Republic. The barber here named Lars cuts all the PBA guys' hair, has a great following out here, Simon being one of those guys. A huge fan of the PBA, he's got all their jerseys up in his barber shop, so we're going to go check out his haircut with Simon right now. If you get a fresh cut, you feel better, look better, um, and ultimately you want to play better. So, um, And then the, the marketing side of it, you know, this is a business. If you're more marketable, more opportunities to, uh, are willing to go towards you. So, you know, just trying to look your best the whole time. I mean, you are people do look up to you out here as a as a professional basketball player. Uh, when we come here, that's why I like coming to Lars because not only is the haircut that it looks nice, you know, but there's a certain camaraderie around here. You know, mostly all the Philams come here to get cut. Um, a lot of PBA players, as you see, there's a lot of jerseys on the on, on the window. So, you know, that's how you, you ultimately uh, network around the league as well. That first year out here playing in the D-League, you, you come to Lars and you see those players that are in the league doing well, you know, and you get to talk to them. You know, they're just normal people. You know, they're, they're, they're considered celebrities out here, but they're just normal people. And, uh, you know, to sit down and talk to them, whether it's Tagalog or, or English, I could do both. So, you know, to sit down and talk to them and get to know them, man, that's how I build, you know, my relationship and friendships out here. I feel blessed. Was a you know like a public figure, so they're on the court, right, playing basket, and then like a for me, if I have that guy's like uh, playing in the red carpet because of a lot of cameras, you know, walking poster for him, man. Like, yeah, this is his yeah, work, yeah. so you know, you're right. We kind of like uh, send it out to the world. And Lars does more than just cut hair. <laughs> He also raises roosters for cockfighting, or sarong as it's known in the Philippines, where it's perfectly legal and part of the culture. This is Henny, bro. He's a four-time winner now. Four-time, bro. You swag. Simon plays his home games at a place called Smart Araneta Coliseum. It's the same place where Muhammad Ali fought Joe Frazier in the famous Thrilla in Manila bout. A lot of history in this arena and Simon gets to be a part of that tonight. Of course you got to be mentally prepared to play the game so you know usually I go over the scouting report, you know who I'm guarding, their tendencies, what we're doing as a team. Every time I do walk into the arena I'm just like man I can't believe it you know um, out here doing doing something that you know, not a lot of people get an opportunity to do. So uh, I just cherish every every time that I step onto the court and I walk into that arena, man. Because you, you never know, man. Uh, this thing can be snatched away from you in any second. Thank you. When you're able to get texts or phone calls from people that really support you and that love you after a game, what's that like for you? Is that a little surreal because you're essentially on the other side of the globe? Yeah, man, it's crazy. Uh, my mom and my dad, man, they stay up real late, even though they got work the next day, early morning. They stay up real late just to watch my game. So I appreciate them, you know, just supporting me every day or every game that I play in. Once I got that text from my dad, he was like, man, good game, son. You know, I see all the hard work and, you know, just be patient. Your time will come. Um, and he said, man, keep playing out there. We're, we're all so proud of you, man. And once I heard those words from my mom and dad that they were just proud of me, um, being out here, man, just made it so much easier. 
I did make the right decision and and, and I'm making my family proud and, and this is truly where God set me to be. So yeah man, I'm truly blessed, man. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Let it rain! Simon gets to the gym early to work out with one of the coaches, get some shots up. After that, it's time to head to the locker room. What's wrong with Canada, Haas? Huh? Any man and everything, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get taped up by athletic trainers who are just as dedicated to their craft. <laughs> Another part of his regimen is a deep tissue massage and getting stretched out. With head coach Boyette Fernandez just a few feet away, writing the scouting report. We will win ball games if we will play defense first. Think about defense, consistency. Okay? Been passed, we're up and down. We win big, we lost big. Right now, it's a good chance for us to redeem ourselves. Amen. Amen. Let's go, fight strong, buddy. Let's fight strong. Let's win. Let's win, baby. And let's go three. One, two, three. Yes. I work out a lot with him during the preseason. Sometimes we go, we just go in and, and work on some things. And he can do it. I mean, like, it's easy for him. But I always say, say to Simon, hey, Sai, you got really good handles. Um, your form is good. You can shoot from the three. But you have no middle game. Um, it's either you're a drive or you're a three point shot. You don't have a pull up. And that's the one thing that you have to, to learn to, uh, to have in your game. The game here is different than the States. And there's a lot of hand checking, there's a lot of pushing, a lot of shoving. I think that's the one thing that he needs to learn. <laughs> it's important that you get to, to relate to your teammates. Um, the locals, um, get on their side, you know, be one of them and connect, connect with your roots. Because the moment the locals would see that, hey, he's one of us. The problem with Phil Am sometimes they would just kind of stay on the side and not mingle with, uh, with the locals. And, and that's going, not going to be good for, for a team like basketball when you need everybody to be on the same page. So you can have a chemistry problem if you're like that. That guy right there, get him on camera. There we go. <laughs> Game time! Hoop. The PBA is all about the fans. So you can warm up, but you gotta take some pics and sign a baby's forehead too. And there's a camaraderie that's not just reserved for teammates. The imports, one allowed on each team, also show each other love. <laughs> While some of the pregame looks familiar, it's still a unique experience. What are those? Don't forget Sweet Corn and Frank's coming in hot too. But ultimately, it's about the product on the court. Simon's role during his rookie season is the backup point guard. But Coach Fernandez comes for him early. From the minute he steps on the court, Simon's pass-first mentality is evident. For his PBA career, Simon has an assist-to-turnover ratio of almost 3 to 1, which would rank in the top 15 for the NBA. On defense, when he wasn't running through screens set by 6'8 Tyler Wilkerson, Simon was helplessly watching him score. The former Spurs D-leaguer would finish the triple overtime game with 58 points. Meanwhile, Al was cooking with bacon grease scoring 69, the most in over two decades for a PBA game. But it's Wilkerson that lands the knockout punch as San Miguel drops Enlex by four. A few days later, the Road Warriors are out for redemption against Global Port. And you couldn't draw up a more challenging matchup for Simon. Head to head against national team point guard Terrence Romeo. Simon holds his own, and Al gets it going early as Enlex takes a nine-point lead into halftime. Hey, bust down, Tatiana. Oh, and here's a free T-shirt. Go, 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 go,
in the second half, four-year NBA vet goes back to work on his way to 33 points and 19 rebounds as the Road Warriors win by five and secure a spot in the playoffs. Everybody who come off the bench always steps up and uh, credit to all of you guys. It's not on me, it's not it's not really on the coaches, but it's really the players, it's you. Good job boys! Shit out! What is that, a burrito? You got that Mexican food in you. Amazing, good stuff on it. Thanks for cheering for us, man. You gave us the win, baby! You gave us the win! Alexo 3, 1, 2, 3! This is my favorite part of the day. Oh man, I forget. I'm hungry. Oh, you gonna eat this stuff? Huh? You gonna eat that stuff? Nah, I'm gonna get my usual. I'm gonna go to Alex. <laughs> I don't want to eat it, I'll eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Out to his post game ritual in the hallway full of love. It's a big fan of Index. We watch uh, all of your games. Oh, okay. yeah. we, we just saw you in Pinya and uh, Pinya called us. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Thank you for supporting me and I hope you guys come to the games. Thanks, bro. Thanks, man. I respond to your business. All right, all right. For sure. Shane is here. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I said basketball is big out here. Uh, if I would walk, if I would walk out of the game in the states, it probably wouldn't be the same. So, you know, I'm just trying to enjoy it. Hi, everybody. I hope to see you at the games again. I appreciate all the support that you give. Thank you. Thank you. An Uber ride brings us to Buffalo Wild Wings. It's as if Simon is back home. I love watching Russell Westbrook. Yeah. His energy and stuff, I try to, you know, I try to feed the energy when I get on the court like that. But his shit is out of, the, out of this world. The next day, it's time for me to say goodbye to Manila and its beautiful people. <laughs> Hi, Cy. Went to a couple games. Yeah. Way too many practices in that hot gym. I uh, went to your aunt and uncle's house. Basically just went all around Manila and hung out with you for a couple weeks. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. It's time to get back to the States, though. Anything that you want to say to your people back home? Uh, well, first off, I want to, you know, say thanks to you, showing your support, coming out here. And uh, for my family and friends back home, my mom, my dad, my sister, I love you guys. Uh, thank you for always supporting me and, you know, showing your love. And I, I couldn't have done this without you guys. So, you know, thank you for everything you've done for me. And we both appreciate everybody watching back home. I think it's time for me to catch one of these jeepneys. Do you think one of these will go to the airport? Yeah, I think one or two, maybe three, will get you to the airport. <laughs> time to sweat some bullets and jump into one of these. While some of the youngsters I met will never get to see different parts of the world, their journeys will help them form meaningful bonds thanks to collective struggles and loving a game that makes the unlikely possible. For proof, all they have to do is look at Simon. First train to Paris, I'll be on. Loading up my heart and up my gun. Where the watercolored streets are stained with blood. Our lives, but not our love. 
So bring me a place In every color but gray Where the laughter's so loud You can hear all the hatred And we'll come along With the fire burning strong Let us light the way Can you hear us calling out for peace? See the light is almost shining through In a world where everyone is free Testing, testing, one, two, all right. I want to start by saying a huge thank you to Simon and CISO for letting me hang out with him for a couple weeks. Had an absolute blast in Manila. I want to give a shout out to some of his teammates as well that were on the NLEX squad. Asital Lava, Al Thornton, Sean Anthony, Rob Reyes were all great to me during my stay there, as was the coaching staff, Coach Fernandez, Jojo Lastimosa for sitting down with me to get to talk to a legend like Jolas was really cool. You guys can keep up with Simon's career now. He's playing for the Alaska Aces, so continue to encourage him to new heights. I want to give a huge thank you as well to my buddy Pete from the audio units. He did all the soundtrack, the music for this documentary. So could not have done this without him as well. And to you guys, thank you so much for watching this. Um, this is only the beginning for what I'm hoping will be my dream job for the rest of my life to be able to travel and tell these kind of stories for everyone who liked, shared, commented, all that stuff. It is a huge help to me. I've stepped away after 15 years of doing TV work to create my own content and I'm really excited about it. I'm working on a couple different shows that will be centered here in LA, sports and music, but it's all to build toward this, the dream of being able to travel and tell these kinds of stories. So thank you all for hanging out with me, and there will be a lot more trips on Passport Pros. Thank you so much. We out! <laughs>